It is by giving our lives away that we find significance. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. Today's guest started one of the largest churches in the world and is often referred to as America's most influential spiritual leader. He is Rick Warren, and we get to listen in today as he talks about living a purpose-driven life. Here's Rick. I meet a lot of people who are very smart and say, but why can't I figure out my problems? And I meet a lot of people who are very successful who say, why don't I feel more fulfilled? Why do I feel like a fake? Why do I feel like I've got to pretend that I'm more than I really am? I think that comes down to this issue of meaning, of significance, of purpose. I think it comes down to this issue of why am I here? What am I here for? Where am I going? These are not religious issues. They're, they're human issues. When the book became the best-selling book in the world for the last three years, uh, I kind of had my little crisis. And that was, what is the purpose of this? Because it brought in enormous amounts of money. When you write the best-selling book in the world, it's tons and tons of money. And uh, it brought in a lot of attention, neither of which I wanted. When I started Saddleback Church, I was 25 years old. Um, I started it with one other family and, uh, in 1980. And I decided that I was never going to go on TV because I didn't want to be a celebrity. I didn't want to be a, quote, evangelist, televangelist. Uh, that's not my, my thing. And um, when I started the church, uh, you know, I had no plans to do what it's doing now. And then uh, when I wrote this book, and all of a sudden it just took off. And I started saying, now what's the purpose of this? Because as I, I was starting to say, I don't think you're given money or fame for your own ego ever. I, I just don't believe that. And when you write a book that the first sentence of the book is, it's not about you, <laughs> then when all of a sudden it becomes the best-selling book in history, you've got to figure, well, I guess it's not about me. That's kind of a no-brainer. So what is it for? And I began to think about what I call the stewardship of affluence and the stewardship of influence. So I believe essentially leadership is stewardship. That uh, if you are a leader in any area, in business, in politics, in sports, in art, in academics, in any area, you don't own it. You are a steward of it. Uh, for instance, that's why I believe in protecting the environment. This is not my planet. It wasn't mine before I was born. It's not going to be mine after I die. I'm just here for 80 years, and, and that's it. The problem is most people never really think it through. They never really, they never really uh, co codify it or qualify it or quantify it and say, this is what I believe, and this is why I believe what I believe. Materialism is all about getting. Get, get, get. Get all you can, can all you get, sit on the can and spoil the rest. It's all about more, having more. And we think that the good life is actually looking good. That's most important of all. Looking good, feeling good, and having the goods. But that's not the good life. I meet people all the time who have those, and they're, they're not necessarily happy. If money actually made you happy, then the wealthiest people in the world would be the happiest. And that I know, personally I know, is not true. It's just not true. So the good life is not about looking good, feeling good, or having the goods. It's about being good and doing good. Giving your life away. Significance in life doesn't come from status, because you can always find somebody who's got more than you. It doesn't come from sex. It doesn't come from salary. It comes from serving. It is in giving our lives away we find meaning, we find significance. That's the way we were wired, I believe, by God. And so um, we began to give away, and, and now at, after 30 years, my wife and I are reverse tithers. We give away 90% and live on 10. 
That actually was the easy part. The hard part is what I do with all this attention? Because I start getting all kinds of invitations. I just came off of a uh, nearly month-long speaking tour on three different continents. And I'm going, what do I do with this, this, uh, this notoriety that the book has brought? I pastor a church in one of the most affluent areas of America. There are a bunch of gated communities. I have a church full of CEOs and scientists. And I, I, I could go five years and never, ever see a homeless person. They're just not in my pathway. So I had to say, okay, I will use whatever affluence and whatever influence I've got to help those who don't have either of those. And I guess that's the main reason I came up here today is to say, what's in your hand? What, what do you have that you've been given? Talent, background, education, freedom, networks, opportunities, wealth, ideas, creativity. What are you doing with what you've been given? That to me is the primary question about life. That to me is what being purpose driven is all about. So my advice to you is look at what's in your hand, your identity, your influence, your income, and say, it's not about me. It's about making the world a better place. That does it for today's episode of 7 Good Minutes. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. If you have questions, you can ask those by going to 7goodminutes.com slash askclyde or get me on Twitter at Clyde Lee Dennis. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.